Praise the Lord. Praise God. We've been studying this series called The New and Living Way. And today, we will be looking at our next topic, which is a new heart. A new heart. We all know our heart is a vital organ in our bodies, a strong muscle that pumps throughout our body, probably the strongest, 100,000 pumps a day or more. And uh, when we talk about the heart, we might think of that, but the Bible talks about a different type of heart. Today we'll focus on what the Bible has to say about the heart. Did you know that the Bible mentions the heart 750 times? In essence, the heart is the spiritual part of us where our emotions and desires dwell. The heart is the core of the person that you are. So we will look at what the Bible has to say about our core. And uh, the sermon that I've titled is A Spiritual Heart Transplant. A Spiritual Heart Transplant. Did you know that uh, if someone gets a new heart, many of the desires they had before changes and some of the desires of the person that they borrowed the heart from or the donor heart is what comes into their desires. There's a story of about 23% of heart recipients admitting to experiencing personality changes. I've even seen a story where some man had a dog and when he went and died in the hospital, the dog was able to identify which person got the new heart from this donor. That was a tearjerker for sure. But why am I saying this? We have also received a spiritual heart transplant. Amen. 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 It talks about it from the very beginning of the Bible, and it goes on to talk about it throughout the Bible. We all know that Adam and Eve were created in the image of God, and they committed sin, and man had uh, the fall, and sin came into his life. And God, in his time, through Moses, his servant, decided to give the uh, people the laws as commandments of the Lord. If you go to Exodus, you will see that. Uh, you will see that portion that says what is exactly that the Old Testament saints agreed to. We see there that in Exodus 24, verse 1 through 4, 7 and 12, the Old Covenant was given to the people of Israel. And he said to Moses, come up to the Lord, you, Aaron, Nadab, Abihu, and 70 of the elders of Israel, and worship from afar. But Moses alone needs to come near to the Lord, but the others shall not come near, and the people shall not come up with him. Moses came and told all the people what the Lord had told him, all the rules, all the covenants. And the people in one voice said, all the words of the Lord that has spoken we will obey. We will do it. And then Moses went back up, and the Lord wrote it on a tablet for Moses. And we see that when he first came down, he tore it up, uh, but then he, he got another set of tablet. So the laws of the Lord were written on a tablet this time. But we see that as the children of Israel kept on going, none of them, none of them could keep any uh, each one of the laws, there was different things that they were failing in. And about 600 years before Jesus, the prophet Jeremiah heard the voice of the Lord that said, in Jeremiah 31, verse 33, 3 to 34, there was a, prophet, a prophecy that came. You know, Jeremiah was known as a weeping prophet. He was always giving a judgment on his lips to the people of Israel. So this is not typical of Jeremiah's prophecy, but he clearly saw a problem uh, with the stone tablets. People had hearts of stone.
summary from the Old Testament that the Lord is promising because of the people's inability to keep the laws and the covenants, not because of God's uh, fault, but the people could not keep the covenants of the Lord. He said, I'm going to give my people a new heart with a new spirit, as we read in Jeremiah and Ezekiel. God will take away the heart of stone that is stubborn and rebellious and give us a heart that is obedient to God. Consider this in our own life. There's signs of being in the new covenant. It says we will receive a heart of flesh and we will receive a new spirit. We will have the law of the Lord written in our hearts. We will no longer have to teach each other about the Lord because everyone will know the Lord for themselves personally. Amen. That is the signs of being in the new covenant. Now you might ask, what's wrong with this stony, rigid, dark, stubborn heart that is unforgiving, that is uh, not able to be cut by the sword, which is the word of God? See, I think that is the main issue here. If, the, if there is a strong, rocky heart, the word of the Lord cannot penetrate it. The word of the Lord is like a sword, and it is uh, not able to cut it open. But if we end up having what the Lord has promised us, which is a soft, forgiving, loving, cut by the word of God heart, then we will listen to what the word of God says. We're able to listen to the directions of the word of God. We're able to obey what the word of God says. He says that he will create a pliable, a sensitive heart, which is a gift from God himself. So when we accept the Lord Jesus as our personal savior, the Lord is saying uh, that I will put my heart upon that child of God. You know, I want to go to, I think it was slide four that said, uh, go back a little bit and explain a little bit, especially about what Joe taught last week. And so we can get a better context. You see that picture there, that circle? You see that in the middle, this is all of us. Every person sitting here has a spirit, a soul, and a body. And the soul is composed of three parts, the mind, the emotion, and the will. And when we talk about the heart in the Bible, it is the combination of the three parts of the soul and the most important part of the spirit, which is conscience. If you uh, need the Bible references to, to look at that, in Matthew chapter uh, uh, 9, verse 4, we see that Jesus, knowing their thoughts, why are you thinking evil things in your heart? So thinking is an activity of the mind, but the Lord Jesus asked the scribes, why are they thinking with their hearts? And that shows us that thinking or mind is part of our heart. In Acts eleven twenty three. 23, we see that when he arrived and saw the grace of God, rejoiced and encouraged them to remain with a purpose, uh, with, with the Lord, with a purpose of heart. We see that the will is part of our heart. Then in John chapter 16, we see that our emotions are part of our spiritual heart. And most importantly, we see that the conscience that we have is part of uh, our heart. So when we become born again, what happens is our spirit is poured into by the Holy Spirit of God. And we can leave it like that and not, con so we have now the nature of Christ. We are poured into by the Holy Spirit of God in our spirit man. And then we can leave it like that and be a carnal being. We talked about natural man, carnal man, and spiritual man. So a natural man does not have God anywhere in his life. But an, uh, a carnal man has accepted the Lord, we said. So his spirit is uh, accepted the Lord as his savior, but he does not grow. He has the nature, but he's not nurturing himself, not renewing his mind, not having his emotions held check, not having his will be in the will of God. 
And so when we talk about having a heart uh, spiritually, it is not talking about our physical heart. It is talking about our soul, all three parts, our mind, emotions, and will, and the spirit, and the most important part of the spirit, which is the conscience that is working together. Uh, and then when those work things are in unison with the Lord, when we're growing day by day in our spiritual walk, then our body follows suit. We want the things that please God. Our emotions are in check. Uh, we are in the perfect will of the Lord. Our conscience is not seared anymore, but when we do something wrong, uh, our conscience brings us back into the perfect will of the Lord. So that is what I believe, uh, and you could uh, say many different ways to say this, but one way to say this, continuing on what was studied last week, it tells us that the Bible says our heart is composed of our soul and our spirit. So human heart in its natural condition is evil, treacherous, and deceitful. So if we have not accepted the Lord Jesus, if we're a natural man, our heart condition is evil, treacherous, and deceitful. We learned that a few weeks ago. And our problem is not external, but it is internal. All of us have a heart problem. Jeremiah 17, 9 says, the heart is deceitful above all things and beyond cure. Who can understand it? And only by Jesus coming became our double cure was our heart condition uh, fixed. So we went from a heart of stone to a heart of flesh. It was through the flesh and the burial and the resurrection of the Lord Jesus that we have a heart of flesh. And now our spirit man is infilled with the spirit of the living God and we are able to go forward in the ways of the Lord. Uh, in Mark 17, uh, in 7, 21, and 20, uh, 21 to 23, Jesus says, from out of a man's heart comes evil thoughts, all kinds of immorality, th theft, murder, adultery, greed, malice, deceit, lewdness, envy, slander, arrogance, and folly. And we see that all of those things come from a, a natural man, a man that does not have the Lord in them. But at the same time, if we just say a prayer uh, at, a, at a revival meeting, and we say that we are a Christian, but we're not actively trying to nourish our soul, our mind, will, and emotion. If we're not in community with the, with the believers of God and we're not uh, trying to uh, grow or nurture our soul, then we continue to live in a state of a carnal man. But when we are able to... Uh, write the word of God in our heart, we start to uh, have our spirit, encourage our soul, our mind, will, and emotion, and we become a child of God, uh, truly. And that is what the Lord desires of us. If you go to uh, Colossians chapter 3, you'll see uh, many of those qualities. I have made it as a fourth chamber of a new heart. Four chambers of the new heart. If you go to Colossians chapter 3, uh, verse 1 onwards, uh, you can see this. You can see that kindness, humility, meekness, and patience is mentioned in chapter 3, verse 12. So if we truly have a God-shaped heart that is made of the flesh, uh, and, and on the spirit of the living God is speaking to our human spirit, and we are encouraging our soul daily, then we will have these qualities in us. Colossians chapter 3, verse 12 says, we will have a compassionate heart. I want you to examine yourself. I want to examine myself. Is God's word written on my heart? If that is the case, there is going to be these qualities. Kindness, humility, meekness, and patience. A forgiving heart, as it says in 3.13, bearing one another, forgiving one another. All the complaints that others have against you, you forgive. A forgiving heart is a quality of a heart that is shaped after God. In 3.14, it says, a loving heart, put on love and perfect harmony with your brothers. And then we know that in verse 15 through 17, we have a thankful heart. Be thankful 
Let the peace of Christ rule over you. Live in the word and sing psalms and hymns as we live on this earth. So if we are truly having a renewed heart, if we're following the new commandment and the Lord Jesus and the spirit of the living God is inside of our hearts and our spirit man is then strengthening our soul and we are living and seeking after the will of God, renewing our mind and holding our emotions in what the word of God tells us, then we will have these qualities. What are these qualities really? And I think we'll go into it next week by the next speaker. It talks about a new uh, behavior trait, right? And it is the fruit of the spirit. If you have the fruit of the spirit, you have a new spirit-filled heart, which is talked about in Galatians chapter 5, verse 22 to 23. Love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. So God saw that even though the laws were written on the stone, the people of God could not obey them, and he had to send his only begotten son, and his flesh was crushed so that we could have a new heart of flesh. And this heart of flesh is talking about our soul and our spirit. And when we become a new creation, when we become a new uh, child of God under the new covenant, our spirit needs to be continually in communion with the Holy Spirit. And then uh, we need to continue to find community where we are nurturing our soul, where our mind, our will, and emotions are continually uh, being uh, uh, worked on by the Lord. And this is what is called by, I will write my, uh, I will, God has written his word upon our heart. So it's not good enough just to come to church on Sunday. The law must be written on your hearts as it second, says in 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 2 and 3. Paul, Paul told the believers in Corinth that it is written not with ink, but by the spirit of the living God, not on tablets of flesh, but on our hearts. So let me ask you today, is God's word written on our hearts? When God word, God's word is written on our hearts, it permeates our whole being. It influences our thoughts, words, and actions. Practically, though, how can we make this happen? Or how can the Spirit work in us? We need to be careful about what we put into our hearts, our soul and our spirit. Bad things, you know, in the degenerate godless society that we live in, there are so many perverse opinions and materialistic principles that try to take a hold of our hearts. And uh, it will be through social media, it will be through schools and your friendships, you know, back in the day, parents knew who was coming into their house and influencing the kids. But today, without any parent knowing, there's many ways that people, our children, can communicate with others, predators, and many other friends through virtual means that can have a hold on your child's heart. As an immigrant community, sometimes we think that if my child is doing well in school, that's good enough, that they're doing good and they're getting good grades, so they are good. But the, what does the Word of God say? It says that if your child has a hardened heart, if you have a hardened heart of stone, then the Word of God cannot penetrate it, and only if we have a heart that is of flesh can the Word of God cut us up. Amen? So we see if we put garbage into our mind, garbage will come out and we'll have a sick mind, a sick soul. But we need to be careful about what we feed ourselves. And the only way to feed ourselves the right things is to have the Word of God etched in our hearts. So when we read the Word of God daily, when the Word of God speaks to us, it needs to permeate our hearts and let us go into a heart that is under the guidance of the Word of God. Amen. So let us teach our children, as I'm concluding here, my time is up, it says, let us teach our children the word of God. Talk to them when you're at home, when you ride in the car, when you lay down, when you rise up. Let the commandments of the Lord be written upon the tablets 
of your heart. As the worship team is still coming up, let me tell you one of the uh, stories that spoke to my heart the most was the story of the woman who brought the alabaster box. It's talked about in, in all the Gospels, but specifically the lady who came in Matthew and Mark with this alabaster box and broke it at the feet of Jesus. And she, um, it was 360 denarii. Each denarii was worth a day's salary. And all the people said, what a waste. What a waste. What are you doing? Why are you wasting this money? And she said, and the Lord stopped them and said, she's anointing me because she knows about my uh, upcoming arrest and my death. And she, uh, the Lord also said, because she is forgiven much, she is spending extravagant worship on me. If we have a heart of flesh, as we're singing together, we will have a heart that is pliable, that is able to be cut up by the word of God and give extravagant worship to the Lord. May God bless you all with these words. Amen. Can we all stand?